Next, I'd like to introduce to speak, open the case uh, for the opposition, Lucas Seifert, Press and Spot Officer from Christchurch College. Good evening, members. And thank you, Mr. President, for giving me the extreme honor to speak in this historic chamber tonight. I am truly grateful for this opportunity. I would also like to extend my congratulations for putting together such a beautiful and excellent term card, and I look forward to the weeks ahead. Your path to presidency has been bumpy, <laughs> but here you are. I'm sure you will continue to be a great leader of the society. Now, members, the motion tonight pits two very well-known individuals against each other. Stormzy, highly acclaimed rapper, winner of three Brit Awards, and a voice for the disenfranchised. And Boris Johnson, ex-president of the Oxford Union. But the debate is larger than that. These two figures are synecdokes for their respective fields, rap music and politics. They are cultural symbols, almost synonymous with their spheres of activity. The use of the term relevance in popular discourse is imprecise and disparate. A precise formulation is difficult, but we can begin by looking at three broad categories which should give sufficient coverage of the theme and give the term some substantive content. I will then persuade you on why Mr. Johnson and politics come out on top in each aspect. The three categories for defining relevancy are as follows. Firstly, the number of people to whom one's influence extends. Secondly, the ability to enact actual change in society. And thirdly, to what extent the pertinent issues of the time are addressed. But before I get into these arguments, it falls upon me to introduce the speakers for the proposition tonight. You have just heard from Rosie Jacobs, member of Secretary's Committee and a good friend of mine. Now, don't you go to St. Anne's, Rosie? I know, I wouldn't even know where to find it. I would know where to find Rosie, though, at bridge on a Thursday, hacking to make up for the vote she lacks in college. <laughs> Next, I'd like to introduce Ms. Jasmine Dotiwala. Ms. Jasmine is um, a broadcaster and producer involved with Netflix, MTV, and BBC Radio London. When I heard about all the amazing artists that Ms. Dottiwala has interviewed, such as Eminem and Jay-Z, I was more upset than impressed. Why didn't we invite them instead? <laughs> Next, I'd like to introduce Mr. Montgomery, a journalist and drill expert. He has done extensive work in the UK rap scene, having worked on YouTube documentary, Terms and Conditions. Tonight we're debating on who's more relevant, Boris or Stormzy, but there's certainly no debating that Mr. Montgomery is less relevant than both of them. <laughs> Finally, um, Mr. Nels Abbey. Now, I found out this afternoon that Kenny Allstar wouldn't be coming, so instead we have Mr. Nels Abbey, writer, media executive, and author of Think Like a White Man. His upcoming book, The Hip Hop MBA, explores what we can all learn from the business of rap music. For all those who are waiting for Kenny Allstar, it's fine, don't leave just yet. I can assure you that as an ex-banker, Mr. Abbey would be just as exciting. All I'll say is, if Mr. Nels puts uh, as much effort into his speech as he does his tweets, he may finally get a Wikipedia page. <laughs> Mr. President, these are your guests, and they are most welcome. Now, to address my first point, that relevancy is partly based on the number of people to whom one influence extends, whether or not that influence is negative or positive. Intuitively, it seems clear that a prime minister can reach more people across a range of ages and social backgrounds. Furthermore, a person like Boris Johnson has a global influence, while Stormzy's is far more localized. Let's look at some numbers to flesh this out. In the 2019 general election, Boris Johnson's party got about 14 million votes. On the other hand, Stormzy's massive 2019 Glastonbury, uh, Glastonbury Festival performance only had a crowd of 250,000. While not directly comparable, the size of the disparity is still telling and shows some indication of Mr. Johnson's quantitative reach. My argument is not that Mr. Johnson's reach is necessarily good, but in terms of pure numbers, even disadvantaged groups are aware of him and his position of power. That is an important factor to consider when breaking down relevancy. Now, the second aspect of relevancy, which I will discuss, is the ability to enact actual change in society. To make it clear, there is no denying that grime artists have a loud voice, an important one, and I commend this greatly. As an English student who studies art's power to create change, I recognize that this music is an important and powerful tool. Yet, arguing for the opposition, I believe that this implicit power is not as significant as the government's ability to legislate. The very fabric of everyday life can be directly changed 
by the decision that a politician makes. In the 1970s, for example, another conservative prime minister, Edward Heath, changed the work week to three days. Admittedly, his hand was forced by the trade union strikes, but they were in large part themselves created by Tory policy decisions. The way in which the situation was handled and the resulting structural effects were fixed by those in power. An artist will make a piece of music expressing their views and release it to the public with the goal to make a difference, but that is the extent of their potency. The government, on the other hand, has the ability to increase funding across sectors, change the educational system and create new laws. That brings me to my final point, and possibly the most important one in terms of relevancy. To what extent the most pertinent issues of the now are addressed and acted upon? Arguably, the pandemic has been the most relevant issue in the last two years, taking over the lives of everyone, from the youth to the elderly. What difference has Stormzy or any grime artist made in this pandemic in comparison to Boris Johnson and the political establishment? Whether positive or negative, the way in which the UK has handled the pandemic, the way in which people's lives have been affected, that is relevant. And I do believe that the government has had a bigger say in this than any other rapper has. Whether or not a mask should be worn in public, the politicians are the ones who ultimately make that decision. But today's biggest issues are not restricted to the pandemic alone. The war in Ukraine, global warming, crime, big tech, Brexit. Who is held most accountable for making active change? The way in which Boris Johnson settled the Brexit deal with the European Union has had all-encompassing effects for large groups of people. For example, some European citizens have had great difficulty getting settled status in the UK and have been forced to go back home. If something is going wrong in the country, people don't often blame rappers, they blame the politicians. And that, I believe, is most indicative when debating relevancy. So, while musicians can certainly inspire change as they should, Mr. Johnson and the political party have the ability to make legislative changes that have greater causal efficacy. The explicit effects of their actions are therefore more directly impactful than the psychological influence of grime artists. I agree, many underrepresented groups will find grime music more relatable, and I am not arguing that Boris Johnson is more relevant for every single person. My point is that in terms of net relevancy, Mr. Johnson comes out on top. You may not be listening to his Boris Bop, but I can assure you that you are nevertheless experiencing its effects. Thank you.